Hello guys, I'm CSC Alex and welcome back to another transfer special video where I'm going to cover four specific topics. The first one regards the Sarri uh, rumours and the updates that have emerged over the last couple of days. The second one regards the Fakir news uh, in relation to Liverpool and how Chelsea uh, could fit in into this. The third one regards a potential new right back signing and the fourth regards a potential new left back signing. So let's get right into it. All right, so as I just said, the first topic regards the Sarri rumors and the updates on Sarri specifically. So I have been told by my source that the deadline to get Sarri has been extended uh, because Sarri will be in London on Monday to hold negotiations with Chelsea and the board. Not only that, Abramovich has clearly stated that Sarri is his main target. Even though he kind of likes Jokanovic, Sarri is definitely the main target. And he's also asked the board to do everything they can to sign him. And based on that information, he told me that hopefully the deal for Sarri should get done in a matter of days. With regards to Conte, um, basically pretty much once Sarri signs, the situation with Conte should be resolved. Now, I've been told that uh, Sarri wants to bring uh, Giovanni Matus um, the current technical collaborator at Inter, and Sarri wants him to come to Chelsea to be part of his staff. Sarri has also asked Chelsea to sign four specific players who are part of his main targets, and those are Zielinski from Napoli, Koulibaly from Napoli, Hissage from Napoli and Higuain from Juventus. Now, in my opinion, I think, you know, Zielinski uh, could be uh, more of a backup option just in case we do not get Seri. However, if we get Seri and Zielinski, that could mean that Bakayoko's future at Chelsea is over. With regards to Koulibaly, I think he's definitely a good centre-back and could offer a strong centre-back partnership with Rüdiger. His such, I think since, you know, Sarri knows him quite well, uh, it's, it's understandable that he wants to target him. Now to my thoughts on Higuain, I just don't think he's the right signing for Chelsea because, you know, he's getting old, he's getting slower, his efficiency in front of goal is not as good as it used to be. And that's also the reason why Juventus are planning on selling him and are actually offering him to Chelsea because, you know, uh, the Sarri and the Higuain partnership could possibly work. To me, I think it's better off going to some, for someone like Icardi because, you know, even though he has a release clause of roughly 95 million pounds compared to what um, Juventus are offering at roughly 60 to 70 million euros. This is a player who's young, he's a proven goal scorer and where you can have him at the club for the next five to six years and he will just grow and grow and grow on the salary. So yeah, to me, I just don't think Higuain is the best option. All right, so now onto the second topic of this video regarding the Fakir news. Now, as you all very well know, Lyon have decided to pull out of negotiations with Liverpool surrounding Fakir and have stated that Fakir will stay at Lyon. Of course, there's a lot of speculation that the reason why it went this way was because of the medical and due to previous uh, injuries. The reason why, to be honest, and I've been told this by my source, is because Lyon were not happy with the offer for Fekir. Uh, they felt forced into a transfer and they want to wait until after the World Cup because they want his value to increase and therefore to, to get more money out of him. Now, where does Chelsea tie in on, into all this? Now, Chelsea contacted Fekir's agent after this information was released and they wanted to see if Fikir had any interest in coming to London. Fikir's agent's response was basically, you know, Fikir wants to reassess uh, his moves for now, but he isn't saying no. Um, initially, he didn't really like to come to London because of the managerial uncertainty, but getting Sarri before the World Cup could possibly change the view of Fikir, maybe, just maybe, he might consider coming to Chelsea. So in this type of sense, I think it's basically saying, look, maybe, I don't know, you know, 
let's just see who your manager is and then afterwards uh, we can start talking. Now let's see my thoughts on Fakir and I think he's definitely the type of player that would suit in into Sari's system. You know, Sari likes to have an attacking centre mid like um, Marek Hamsik that he had uh, at Napoli. And so if you look at the stats of Nabil Fakir, you definitely see that Fakir in terms of his attacking stats uh, is definitely better compared to Marek Hamsik. So if Chelsea do land Fakir, it would be a huge benefit for both Sarri and for Chelsea. Now onto the third topic of this video and that regards the potential signing of a new right back. Now the reason why I'm saying this is because we've been linked with Florenzi from Roma, the links are definitely true. Sarri wants as part of his main targets his side from Napoli who's also a right back. And it got me thinking that Moses will not be the main right back for next season, even though there are some other Chelsea channels who may want Moses as the right back. So it got me thinking, who will be our next right back for next season if Sarri does come? And so from here, I think the best way would be to basically look at the stats between Florenzi, Hissage and Moses and see who's the better right back. And not only that, I would like to integrate a player that I think should be considered, which is Joao Cancelo from Inter Milan. All right, so now onto the actual stats between those players, and let's start off with the attacking stats. Now, when I look at the attacking stats, I see that if you compare his Hissage to Cancelo, you see that Cancelo is much better than his Hissage, even though he's played less in the Serie A compared to, not, uh, compared to his Hissage it definitely shows that Cancelo is a better player. If you compare Cancelo to Florenzi though, um, there is some differences on that end. So it's pretty even, it just depends on what key areas would Chelsea focus on in terms of the attack. And then lastly, if you also compare Cancelo to Moses, you see that apart from the shots per game, Cancelo is a much better player. So just based on the attacking stats, it might be best to consider Cancelo and Florenzi over Moses and Hissage. All right, so now onto the defending stats. And what you can see through here is that it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty mixed. Uh, it depends, of course, on this sense, what type of player are you looking for? So to me, what I see is that Cancelo is, um, it's decent in terms of defense. He is decent in terms of attack. His Hissage is very good in terms of defense, but he's not as good in terms of attack. And then in terms of Florenzi, he, he's average in both areas. Uh, so if you want someone who's relatively average, I think Florenzi might be the better option. But then the second choice for me would be Cancelo. Now onto the last topic of this video, and this concerns the potential signing of a new left back. Now the reason why I say this is because there are definite links from Real Madrid linking them to Alonso and if this is 100% accurate and Real Madrid are definitely interested in signing Alonso, Alonso could think wow I mean a big club like Real Madrid coming in this could be the only chance I've got to sign for a club like this and so in that type of sense he might decide you know what I'll just go for it. And in that specific area, I think basically this could mean that we would have to look at signing a new left back should this happen. Now, I don't think Emerson is quite yet ready to be in the starting 11. Um, I think he's definitely a good backup, but I think we should look at someone else. Now, I've done a lot of research and I've looked um, for candidates that would be uh, best suited and to be honest there's only one I could see and that's Alex Telles. Now let's go into the stats between Alex Telles and Marcus Alonso and starting off with the attacking stats you can see that there is uh, some big differences. Marcus Alonso he has more goals compared to Alex Telles but you know when you have a player who makes 14 assists in one season that's definitely amazing and that's a player who should definitely be considered. His shots per game um, Alex Telles is half as low compared to Marcus Alonso. But if you look in the other areas, you know, his key passes per game are 2.9, which is pretty high. His dribbles per game are at 0.8, higher than Marcus Alonso. He's fouled less compared to Marcus Alonso. In terms of offsides, it's pretty much similar. In terms of being dispossessed, it's lower compared to Marcus Alonso. 
And in terms of how many successful touches, so by controls per game, you know, Alex Telles is definitely doing better compared to Marcus Alonso. And then in terms of defensive duties, you can definitely see that Alex Telles is the better player. You know, his tackles per game are better, his interceptions per game are better. Yes, I mean, his fouls per game are similar, are the same as Marcus Alonso. His clearances per game are better, his dribbles per game are better, his outfield of blocks per game are at the same level. So to conclude from here, I think Alex Telles is definitely the man to replace Marcus Alonso. And if Chelsea get their hand on Alex Telles, they would have a very good left back. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel. I would massively appreciate it. And once you've subscribed, please press that bell notification button. I will catch you guys later.